only within the past two years that I've discovered my passion for teaching. What really motivates me is finding ways to combine literacy and effective instructional practices with Web 2.0 technology. I feel very strongly that teachers need to find ways to uh, value the types of communication that students do outside the classroom <coughs> and find ways to bring those types of communication into the classroom in safe and meaningful ways. <coughs> Over the past year, I've been experimenting with NING and its applications for education. Now, what is a NING, you might ask? Well, a NING is an online platform that allows basically anybody to create their own social network. And you're probably all, all too familiar with social networks. Facebook is a social network. And if you're a teacher, you're very familiar with Facebook as a social network. We're probably all familiar with stories about students using Facebook in inappropriate ways and posting pictures of themselves that will maybe not get them jobs in the future. But I'm more interested in the positive applications for social networking. So when a colleague of mine, Philip Raven, was telling me about his project where he had students create Facebook pages for the characters in Of Mice and Men, I was really inspired to do the same type of thing. But I didn't want all the headaches and privacy concerns that using a public site like Facebook might bring. And so, of course, not to mention the fact that Facebook is usually banned in a lot of schools, so that's not very helpful. So this is what brought me to name. Now, one of the things about Ning that I like is it mimics Facebook in many ways, <coughs> but I can control who can access the site. So that's really helpful. Students can choose to create their own profile pages, just like you would on Facebook, and they can add features like photos, video, um, they can add music if I choose to let them add those things. There's also blogging features and a live chat feature. The one thing you do have to be aware of is that the name does contain ads, unless you are using it for educational purposes, in which case you can ask them to remove the ads. So it adds a lot of the benefits that Facebook has without all the drawbacks. So the first project that I actually used Facebook for, or not Facebook, to use a name for, was to have my students create um, a space where they could interact as characters from The Great Gatsby. And, um, create profile pages for the characters in The Great Gatsby. So this is an example of one of my students' pages where he was acting as Nick Carraway. Now, you would think this would be a really easy sell, but I was actually surprised to find that a lot of my students were quite resistant about using the same kinds of technology that they use every day after school. It took a little bit of coaxing, but after a while they got the hang of it and they were more willing to try it out. And so it was really interesting for me to see the way that they demonstrated their knowledge and understanding of the different characters by interacting as those characters on the site. Now, what I really wanted to see was, though, how could I change the level of thinking from just the knowledge and understanding to synthesis and evaluation level thinking? And so, this is what brought me to my next phase of the project, where I created a name that allowed students to extend the conversations that we were having in the classroom about life of Pi um, outside the classroom. And so basically, there were collaborative discussion features on the site, and the students worked together in teams. I didn't want to tell them what I thought the book was about. I wanted to honor their individual reading experiences and have them work collaboratively to make meaning from the text. The next stage of the game was to combine the collaborative discussion features of the name, thank you, with the individual blogging features of the name. And that's primarily how I use the name now. So, for example, in my media class, I have my students blog on a regular basis about a relevant topic that they find interesting, and then they will take the time to go and read their other students' blogs and comment on them by either asking a question or extending the topic in some way. The synthesis and analysis level thinking comes through when the original writer responds to a comment that was on the blog. And so this is a really interesting thing for me to be able to see. I find that they're actually much more willing to um, reevaluate ideas or <coughs> new ideas based on the feedback of their peers rather than the feedback of their teacher. Not that that stops me from commenting 
on their blog posts on a regular basis. Now, for me, the coolest part about this project is that my students down there in St. Thomas are collaborating with Jane Weir's students, wait, Jane, all the way up there in Le Soule. They are all members of the same name, even though they've never met face to face. They interact with each other on a regular basis. They comment on each other's blogs without any prompting from either one of us. And it's a really exciting thing to be able to see. They're harnessing all of the positive aspects of social networking without any of the negatives. They're a little bit anonymous, so they feel freer to take risks, but they're not so anonymous that they can't be held accountable for their actions. The best part about it is that they have an authentic audience to write for. They're not just writing for the teacher, they're writing for real people who are out there and want to hear what they have to say. And this is a very powerful, motivating aspect of the name. We've also created a safe community of learners where the students are positive, they're encouraging each other, and they're supporting each other's learning. And there's a lot of bad press out there about teenagers saying nasty things to each other online. But this is an example of how students are harnessing this power in a really positive way. They're very encouraging, they're very supportive, and it's really a fantastic thing for me to see. Now, the bottom line is I think this is a very powerful and engaging teaching tool that motivates students to think deeply by validating the types of communication that they do every day in their everyday lives outside of school. So in a way, I suppose you could say that we're kind of tricking them into learning, but we're pretty happy with it. We think it works. <laughs>